Welcome to A Day in My Life at Harvard. Today I woke up at 7 in the morning. After waking up, I have breakfast. I always make the exact same fruit smoothie every single day. While I drink my smoothie, I always try to get a little bit of work done. So either I'll read a research paper or I'll do a little video editing. And this usually takes about an hour. After having breakfast, I go to the gym. This usually takes about an hour and 15 minutes. Normally when I come back from the gym, I work for about an hour, but today's different because I have to meal prep. And when I meal prep, I always make chicken and rice. And this will save me a lot of time. I make enough food to last me four days. After I'm done cooking, then I have lunch. Today it's spaghetti, and this is usually my go-to meal, just because it's quick to make. Now I get ready to go to campus. One of the best parts of my day is when I get to put on my watch. I love this watch. In order to save up for it, I went to go work with my dad in construction. This was a summer just before I started at Harvard. The reason this watch means so much to me is because it's a reminder of all that backbreaking work I did with my dad. And it also taught me a lesson. It's that hard work is a choice. Now I pack my backpack. I only take my laptop and my tablet. Since I do theoretical physics, I need an iPad to write down math. And now I'm off to campus. I live really far from Cambridge, just outside of Boston. So in order to get to campus, I have to take the T. The T is the transit system in Massachusetts. Attention passengers, the next red line train to railway is now arriving. In order to get to campus, you have to cross the Charles River. This river separates Boston from Cambridge. The Charles is very important to me. The reason is I spent my first two years of undergrad at Boston University, and I had a dorm that was right on the riverbank. And I would look over the river, and more than anything else, I wanted to go to school in Cambridge. So the Charles was a thing that was quite literally separating where I was from where I wanted to be. And this was a huge source of motivation. It made me work really, really hard. This was six years ago. And in the end, all that hard work paid off because I was able to make it across the river and start my PhD at Harvard. I get off at Harvard Station. This station is huge. It even has its own Dunkin' Donuts. Now we're at Harvard Square. This is basically the town square around campus. There's a lot of nice shops and restaurants here. Harvard Square is right outside of campus. Right now, we're walking past one of the big gates at Harvard. Before starting my workday, I'm gonna head to this waffle shop. I love these waffles. If you're ever in the area, you have to try one. And now we're off to work. We're gonna walk in through one of the smaller gates. This gate leads you to the back of the library. This is Harvard Yard. This is where all the freshmen live. And this is John Harvard. The first thing I do is go to Widener Library. This library is very historic and very beautiful. Harvard loves chandeliers. This is my go-to room. I like it because there's usually not that many people and the desks are pretty big. Now we get set up. So now I'm going to work on reading this research paper. It was sent to me by this postdoc that I work with. We do research in quantum computing. Basically, Google made this claim a few years ago that they attained something called quantum supremacy. Never mind what that is, just know that it's a huge deal in our field. And there's a few people that are a little skeptical about their claim. And this postdoc that I work with, he's one of these people. So he sent me this research paper and he wants me to prove something for him. But since I'm so new to this problem, I have to spend the majority of my time reading and learning. Whenever I get tired, I just sit back in my chair and stare up at the ceiling. That's actually the reason that I love working in this room so much. The ceiling is gorgeous. But sometimes if I get a little tired of the scenery, then I'll switch over to the main room. This is probably the most iconic room at Harvard. Everybody in here is always focused and working very hard. I found a nice spot on this armchair and I'm just spending my time reading over this research paper. But at this point, I'm still very confused about what they're trying to say. But doing physics is really just about working through that confusion until you figure out the answer. Now we're off to eat dinner. I usually eat dinner at least. It's where all the research labs are. And to get there, I walk through the yard.
After dinner, then I go to my office in the physics building. But first, let me give you a quick tour. The store at the end of the hallway is my advisor's office. He established the Millennium Prize problems. These are seven really hard math problems. And if you can solve one, you win a million dollars. The movie Gifted starring Chris Evans is about one of these problems. This is the most Harvard looking room we have in this building. And for whatever reason, it has a piano. These are the mailboxes for the faculty. And Shelly here won the Nobel Prize. Now I go to my office. I usually spend the rest of my day working here. That blackboard you see in the background is what we use for our group meetings and our talks. But mostly we use it when we're having discussions with each other. So the writing you see on it right now is from a discussion I had with a postdoc on something called random quantum circuits. Our office has a lot of really amazing people. One of the grad students who sits next to me, he graduated as valedictorian from Columbia. Another guy in this office, he got his PhD under someone who won the Fields Medal, which is basically the Nobel Prize for math. And the guy who sits behind me, he's the one who's arguing with Google. So when I walk in here, I'm always motivated to work really, really hard. And now it's time to head back home. Walking through the yard is a great way to end the day. And now we're going to catch the tea. We're going to end this story the way it started, over the Charles.